Last time we made this wandering AI that just randomly walks around our navmash and while that works wonders, it's not a particularly threatening AI. So in today's part, we're going to be working towards having this thing chase us down and then next time we'll actually implement the attacking and all the other relevant animations as well. So if you haven't seen the last part, that's okay. Uh, just a quick refresher here. We've got a enemy script which has a few open fields here we've got a ground layer which is the layer that all the navigation mesh stuff is on so that would be this floor over here we've got a player layer which is the gameplay layer that our player object as you can see over here is stored in and we've got a walking range which influences how far the enemy ai can walk in any given action in the script itself we have a game object variable for the player which gets a value from game object.find it's very important that the string you pass in here which in our case is player with the capital p is the same as the name of the actual object in your scene so it can be really easy to mess this up so do keep an eye out for that and then our agent is a get component nav mesh agent then we make this patrol and search destination function combination which if you want to see that more in detail do go check out our previous video today we're going to be making our chasing functionality though which will start making it a little bit more like an actual AI, making decisions and changing states and behavior to go with that. So we'll make some uh, state change variables here. And the first two are going to be, uh, for the time being, a serialized field floats for a site range. Eventually, there's also going to include a attack range. But again, that's not for in this video. And then we'll also make a bool for player in sight which again we're going to be adding a second one for player in attack range later down the line now let's make a new function here a void chase function which will house all the behavior that we want our character to do when we are chasing down the player which is remarkably easy we'll put a agent dot set destination and as the destination we're just going to set our player which is the game object reference that we have so we need to get its transform position and that's literally all there is to it because we've got the nav mesh agent so if we just set the agent's destination to being equal to the player it's going to walk towards the player it's just that easy so we can add the chase function to our update but now we actually need to use our bools to decide when it should do what so we're going to add a little bit of code before those two functions because before we decide which of those two functions we should execute it's only going to be one or the other we're going to set our player in sight to be equal to a physics check sphere and this is going to check in a sphere around a location with a certain radius if it's going to find an object in a specific layer so the original location for our sphere is going to be our current transform position the range is going to be our side range and the layer it's going to be checking for will be the player layer if it finds anything in the player layer in a side range amount around our a player transform it's going to return true and set player in sight to being true if it doesn't it will just set it back to being false and you know what we might as well just lay the foundations for the attacking functionality as well so next to our side range we can say a comma attack range which you can declare multiple variables in a row like this if you want to but it's entirely up to you if you prefer declaring them under each other instead same here with the bulls we can uh, say player in attack range and we can just simply get this player in sight line we can copy it and instead set our player in attack range and of course instead of side range we'll use our attack range here and we'll also just for the time being make a void attack which isn't going to do anything we'll make the actual code for that next time but we're gonna put it in there for now for the uh, for the states so we'll put that into our update loop as well now we're going to put in a bunch of if statements so if 
we don't see any player in sight and we also don't have player in attack range which necessarily if it's in attack range it's also in side range but this is just checking for if it's in neither if it's far away from me i'm just going to be using the patrol functionality then we can just copy over this bit of code for the other two lines because for chasing we're going to check if the player is in the side range so we'll get rid of the explanation point there and it's not in the attack range we'll chase because at that point we can see it but we're not close enough to attack yet so we need to do chasing but then if it's in side range and also in attack range but realistically you could just check for only attack range here we will do whatever is in our attacking code which again you can just like spawn a projectile for range attacks you can do what we're gonna do and make a physical attack animation and this way you have a very simple chasing enemy so now in our enemy we can say our side range is a five and our attack range is one for instance do make sure that your attack range is always lower than your side range because cause needs to be and you'll be able to see that now that we have this enemy chasing us down if we are far enough away though it's just patrolling but when we get close enough it will start chasing us down five is a little bit low and this is a little bit of a matter of experimentation on your part whatever works best for your game so it's chasing us down and at some point it's gonna lose interest in us in theory you see it's lost interest but now that we're close enough again it's going to be chasing us down again and then when we run away it's lost interest again and so on and so forth it's as easy as that a little bit of a shorter video today it's a relatively simple little bit of setup but i wanted to have this in its own video because the last video was information dense enough so as usual there's a link down below in the description to the full project of the full enemy ai with the work that we're going to be doing in the next video as well so if you want to get ahead on that go download that it's available for my patrons down below in the description and next time we're going to be working with the actual animations that this model comes with as well